Today I'm going to be doing a little something different for the sermon. It's going to be a little different style. And it has nothing to do with college basketball. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. <clears throat> the 23rd Psalm uh, is a text that we typically know to be used during funerals, right? Um, but did you know that the 23rd Psalm was not introduced into the book of prayer for funeral services until the early 1900s? It actually is not a psalm that was designed for funerals. It was a poem written by David, it is believed, um, to put an emphasis on God's shepherding of us throughout our life, throughout our entire lives. And with shepherding being a very common vocation at that time, it was a poem uh, that would have connected very easily with the people of that day. And so today in our text, in our gospel text, we also talk about uh, the blind man who receives sight. And there is a connection between these two particular texts um, that is very deep. And so today, my sermon per se is actually going to be something similar to a soap opera in which we have two different events going on at the same time. And so I'm going to be jumping from one scene to the next between Psalm 23 and between our gospel text in John. And I'm not going to tell you when I'm jumping between scenes. I expect that you'll be able to pick that up uh, as it occurs. So um, our perception today as I go between these two scenes is one, the perception from the sheep in the 23rd Psalm, and the perception from the blind man in John chapter 9. All right? So <clears throat> these two perspectives, I, I hope, in the end, are going to come together and make some sense. All right? So in scene one, we begin with the environment of Palestine, which is mountainous, it's rocky, and a dry terrain. Shepherds are leading flocks up and down paths that wind over and through the mountains into the lush valleys where the green grass grows and the running water never ends. There are dangers on these paths. Slippery, steep slopes, wild animals, limited travel times, and straying sheep. There are no vehicles. The only light that is possible other than sunshine is a potential torch. There are no guns for protection. But this is a very necessary journey in order to nurture a flock of sheep. In scene two, we have the blind man who sits daily at one of the gates into Jerusalem. He has seen nothing but darkness since he was born. People look upon him as an outcast. There were assumptions in those days that if one was born with a disability that it was due to the sins of the parents. He was unable to perform most work, most manual labor because of his lack of eyesight. Who will hire a person who requires another to help direct their every move? Hiring two people for the job of one would be inefficient. What good is he to society since he cannot earn a living? There he sits in the same spot day after day. He can't help that he is blind yet he feels the stares, he hears the whispers, and even worse, he recognizes that people ignore him 
Many do not even know he exists. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The shepherd has purchased me and made me one of his flock. He cares about me and wants me to flourish. In this flock of other sheep, many that I do not know, I try to find my way. I'm skittish. I'm fearful of others. I do not trust. Some look different from me. Others are bullies with larger bodies using their power to grab more for themselves and limiting the access to me. How will I get enough? How will I survive? Hmm. That shepherd keeps watching over towards me. He has a caring look. He seems to be more in tune to me than the others around me. Sitting along the road, I hear a crowd coming. I hope that a few compassionate people will drop a coin into my cup. Or maybe that same com compassionate couple that stops once a week will come back to ask me genuinely, how are you doing? I lift up the cup and people are walking by. There's nothing. Do they know I'm here? Can't they see me? Are they blind too? Suddenly a clink. That sounds like a nickel. Maybe that will be enough to buy a loaf of bread today. Wait, what are they talking about? Are they, are they talking about me? Someone has asked a man named Jesus whether my parents sinned for me to be blind. Who is that man they're calling Jesus? In the middle of all these sheep, how is it possible to still feel alone? It feels suffocating. Surrounded by other sheep who are only interested in how much they're going to get for themselves, there goes that you again. Same thing every day. She's always straying and checking out the other side. Maybe I'll go over there and check it out too. Wait a minute. What, what's, that, what's that staff the shepherd just put on my side? I, I guess he doesn't want me going over there. But there he goes. There he goes over to her. He's bringing her back to the flock. She always seems to be doing her own thing. But that shepherd, he, he must care about her too because he keeps going after her. Who is this Jesus guy that everybody is talking about he said that my parents haven't done anything wrong for me to be blind. And he says that he's the light of the world. What's that? What's light? And what does he mean he's the light of the world? Hey, why are you putting mud on my eyes? Do I know where the pool of Siloam is? Yes, it's it's right around the corner. Go there and wash off the mud? Well, why did you put it there in the first place? But okay, if you say so, I'll, I'll go wash it off. Excuse me, sir, I'm sorry if I stepped on you. This man named Jesus just put 
mud on my eyes and told me to go wash it off. Would you please save my spot? I'll be right back. The shepherd is making me feel loved and accepted. Some of these sheep are running and pushing to be first in line for everything, but the shepherd is making sure that we all are getting taken care of. Why run to be the first? Taking chances of getting run over by the stampede or bullied by the bigger sheep? He's making sure that we all have enough. I'm going to be content because I trust that he seems to have the best in mind for me. I trust him. The water is cool. I still can't understand why I put mud on my eyes and told me to come to this pool to wash it off. But for some reason, I trust him. Hey, what's going on? What, what's this brightness that I... It, is this light? Is, is this what things look like? I can't believe it. I can see. Where is he? I've got to go find him and thank him. Wow. There he is. He's come to me once again. The others don't seem to care. They're more interested in themselves. Can't they see how much he cares? It's almost as if they're blind, even though they can see. He doesn't want anyone to suffer. He provides enough. No matter what direction I go, no matter how limited my sight, He is the light that brings life out of darkness. This man, Jesus, is my hope. It is he who comes to me. Amen.